Een hart dat blij is doet goed als geneesmiddel. Maar een geest die te neergeslagen is droogt de beenderen uit. Mr. Carlos Franks, thanks for being with us. You are the writer of El lugar donde estuvo el paraíso. The plek waar het paradijs was. Just uh, edit here in Holland. Uh, could you tell me what is the book talking about, more or less? Well, it's a novel about uh, the relationship between a father and a daughter. Um, it's a novel about love. It's a very psychological novel, but it also has uh, political implications because this um, uh, father is a consul <coughs> in a little town, not so little in the Peruvian Amazon, Iquitos, his name. Um, and um, he is the consul or the representative of a dictatorship of an unknown Latin American country. Um, and there is a plot, a political plot with a political refugee that he's uh, protecting there. Um, so it's a sort of psychological and political intertwined novel. Do you think that uh, this political situation was maybe influenced by this uh, very uh, terrible situation we have with this ex-dictator, Mr. Pinochet, making, let's say, our spiritual environment a little bit dirty? Yes, of course. Um, I'm afraid that the um, Chilean writers, uh, we can't escape from our history. And uh, this novel that I uh, wrote with a feeling of great uh, freedom because I was uh, writing a novel not situated physically in Chile, uh, finally it became uh, another metaphor of our uh, destiny um, through the story of these expatriates um, because everyone, almost everyone in the novel is a, is a refugee or is a political expatriate. I see. And, well, I yourself born in uh, Ginebra. And at what age did you arrive to Chile? And do you feel Chilean or do you feel more European? No, no, no. I'm totally Chilean. As many Chileans, I have a last name that is uh, uh, from abroad, but uh, my grandfather uh, was uh, from Switzerland, and he came to Chile in the um, early years of this century, and he married there um, a Chilean woman, so I'm half and half. Um, and um, I uh, was born in Geneva because my father was a diplomat and uh, he w we were living there during my childhood. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we went to Chile um, when I was uh, 13 years old. And uh, from then on I have been always in Chile and I feel deeply Chilean. Do you uh, belong to the Chilean uh, literary uh, reunion. I mean, there is a group of uh, literary. Yes, but it's not an. It's not, it's not a movement. It's uh, there is, that just happens that uh, there are uh, some writers of my same age that we are um, writing at the same time, and we are some of us uh, friends. Mm -hmm. um, I belong to a literary environment in, in Chile. And your novel, I hear that it was you just sell the rights for a film to be done. How do you define, is your book inside what they call realismo magic? magic? No, not at all, not at all. I don't like uh, magic realism uh, anymore. It was uh, very interesting in, the, in its time, but uh, not now. Uh, no, my novel is realistic. <laughs> it's a very realistic, symbolic uh, novel. I hope it's uh, on the great tradition of um, uh, Latin American novel, but it's uh, a step further uh, from that tradition um, because that's the way I think um, writers have to, to work, uh, or at least it's my uh, opinion. 
from of my work. I, I want to be in the tradition, but I want also to be um, breaking borders and uh, uh, going um, to the horizon. And um, well. Thanks. And you are married. And in between your uh, life, do you consider yourself monogam or polygam? Because for what I, I hear, for what I know, Chileans are none of them monogam. <laughs> It's the first time that I have heard that. Uh, I have been in my life polygam uh, because I have had... Uh, now many girlfriends and, and women, but I'm now monogam because I'm married and happily married and, uh, and I want to stay monogam for the rest of my life, I hope. How do you like Amsterdam? And you were here before, I believe. Yes, I'm in love with this city. I really like it very much. I came here for the first time in last February. And um, I really like the the place. I, I like a feeling that I have that it's a very liberal society, uh, and I like very much the, that um, environment uh, of freedom around. Um, we lack that kind of freedom in in Chile and in general in Latin America. Um, so we call them sorry we call them well, they call us tolerant i call it very compassive how how do you find it and what do you think about all the drugs that you can find here especially grass that is uh, if it is not legal is not persecuted well i feel happy <laughs> because i think uh, grass should be free in ev everywhere And um, I think that's one of the things that uh, remarks this ambience of um, tolerance and, and um, freedom. Um, and I, I would like uh, that in Chile will be the same one day. Well, you had a referendum and about, I believe, and about abortion, but later on nothing happened. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for coming, and I hope to have your film soon in the bioscope, in the cinema, and uh, once again, it's called El Paraíso Perdido. El lugar donde estuvo el paraíso. Perdón, el lugar donde estuvo el paraíso. It's a the very important difference because it's not the place where the paradise is. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I don't want to give the impression that Latin America is uh, the place of paradise. Maybe it was a place where paradise once was. Before the Spaniards, you mean? Maybe. Van Carlos Frans heet de plek waar het paradijs was. En dit is ongeveer de synopsis. In een afgelegen stad midden in het Amazonegebied dat geteisterd wordt door tropisch hitte en hevig regenval, speelt zich het verhaal af van de gecompliceerde relatie tussen gedesillusioneerde consul van een niet met name genoemd land en zijn dochter Anna. Als Anna 19 jaar is besluit de consul na een lang en zwervend bestaan zich eindelijk ergens te vestigen. En voor het eerst in lange tijd krijgt hij een serieuze relatie met een vrouw, Julia. Op haar beurt beseft Anna dat ze op het punt staat volwassen te worden. De innerlijke conflicten die deze bewustwording met zich meebrengt komen tot uiting in een openlijke strijd tussen de twee vrouwen om de gunsten van de consul. Als deze een jonge politieke bandeling onder zijn hoede neemt en Anna op deze jongen verliefd wordt, nemen de gebeurtenissen een dramatische wending met voor iedereen ingrijpende gevolgen. De plek waar het paradijs was is een geraffineerde roman die herinneringen oproept aan Heart of Darkness of Joseph Conrad en Under the Volcano van Malcolm Lowry. In een subtiele, ingetogen stijl weet Carlos Frans de broeierige en troosteloze sfeer te scheppen die de personages tot weerloze slachtoffers van hun gevoel lijken te maken. Uitgave Meulenhof. Señor Mempo Yardinelli, gracias por estar aquí. Usted ha sido invitado al festival cultural que ha organizado el Bali. Y su último libro, El Décimo Infierno, ha sido traducido a varias lenguas. Eh, ¿A qué lenguas eh, en holandés está y en qué otras lenguas lo tenemos? Está en inglés. Uh, wow. Well, uh, all my works uh, is not translated, uh, not yet. Uh, 
but uh, several books uh, they are translated into English, uh, French, German, Dutch, uh, Italian, Portuguese, uh, Korean, Russian, Serbian, uh, Israeli, and <laughs> Bulgarian, Greek. Well, many languages. Well, thank you very much uh, for being here with us. And which one, do you know which one has been translated into Dutch? This one? Into Dutch was uh, um, Luna Caliente, in English is uh, Sultry Moon. And uh, in, in Dutch, uh, I don't know <laughs> which is the name. And uh, La Revolución en Bicicleta is uh, the revolution in bike. Mm -hmm. um, I, I cannot uh, say in, 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 in Dutch. And about you writing, when did you have this feeling to start to write? Well, uh, as uh, almost all uh, professional writers, uh, one uh, starts writing in, in his year when, when one is, is very young. Uh, I remember my my beginnings, and maybe when I when I had uh, 13, 14 years, uh, writing or trying to write some poems, uh, influenced by. Uh, some uh, classical poets uh, uh, in Spanish like uh, García Lorca or mm -hmm. Amado Nervo or Pablo Neruda, or, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so um, my my first uh, short story I wrote uh, when I had um, 18, 17 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but those are... Um, just uh, uh, proofs, just uh, uh, first steps. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing important, and nothing, uh, nothing, nothing must must be uh, remembered. Um, the really, the really start of my writings was in my twenties, twenty one, twenty two, after the the military service in, in Argentina. Uh, in my 20, 21 years, uh, I started uh, writing uh, in my 20s. I see. B but my first uh, published book was uh, in my 30s. I see. And uh, is there something that puts all the books together, I mean, as a subject? Do you try to express something in, in the books that is the same everywhere? Well, uh, cannot be the same because uh, w the person is changing uh, all the time. I, I, I'm not the, f the, the same person I, I, I was in my 20s or in my 30s, in my f right now in my, in my 50s. Uh, I think uh, I have a, a lot of experience. Uh, uh, I read uh, many, many, many books. Uh, my literary experience and my literary um, work, I think, today is uh, is uh, is plain, is uh, is painful, mm -hmm. and um, in I I, I think uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a permanent growing, and I hope so. Where do your uh, novels happen most of the time? In a city or in the countryside? Uh, most of them in a, in a small city, in a small city of the province in Argentina. Uh, it's, it's my province, my, 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 my town. Uh, I'm not living in Buenos Aires. I, I live uh, very far from Buenos Aires, in the northeast of the Argentina. Um, I'm living in the in the border, was in the border, the other side of the river is uh, Paraguay, and several kilometers uh, to the north is Brazil, close uh, Iguazu Falls, and uh, that's my that's uh, the, the 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 terrain, the field of my uh, imagination and my dreamings. I see, and. So you are a little bit far from the political environment in Argentina, or do you still feel very much the pressure of uh, what's going on? 
Well, you know, it's impossible to be uh, far or outside of the political uh, uh, situation in, 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 in our countries. Uh, when you live in, in Argentina or in Chile or Paraguay or Brazil or Uruguay, it's impossible to, to be outside. Uh, or if you decide to, to be an outsider, uh, well, you are an, uh, an awful person. Uh, so um, I try not to write about politics uh, topics. Uh, I try not to write about uh, the dictatorship or, 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 or about the, the, the cruel reality. So what's But the main subject you, you try to approach? Well, uh, I try, but it's impossible. It's impossible to be outside. So um, in, 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 my, in my willings, uh, the, 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 the main subject is uh, uh, to investigate in, in the profound of the, of the human being, as uh, I think uh, most of the writers have tried the same. Uh, the, the man and the woman in the Chaco, and that's, my, that's the place where I live, uh, the man and woman in the Chaco, uh, they have a, 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 um, a very wild um, development because it's a, it's a wild earth, it's the, the end of the world, it's, it's the real end of the world, most of the Patagonia, because it's the subtropical area of uh, Argentina and Brazil and uh, Paraguay and it's a very uh, well it's very very hard very very violent um, and the, the, the jungle is very aggressive uh, so the people there uh, it's I, I cannot say special but uh, are very different uh, very different it's a, a different kind of Argentine people and that's uh, the, 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 the main subject I try to write And about you, do you believe in yourself? Do you believe in God? Uh, how, how about your spiritual life? I think that's not important uh, to say because it's something very private. But if you want to know, I am an agnostic, uh, but uh, I am a very spiritual person. Uh, and I think it's absolutely possible to be both two. Agnostic agnostic and be spiritual I see and about your staying in Holland mm -hmm. uh, Holland is a very known city they call that as tolerance I call it myself very compassive or yes uh, what do you think about well uh, I admire very much this country and uh, it was a very large desire to to know Amsterdam this city this lovely city And uh, I think uh, this is the the years of uh, uh, um, of uh, Spinoza. This is the years of Van Gogh, of Rembrandt, and uh, this is uh, the Flemish painter is, is, is my 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 favorite, and I, I admire very much uh, the 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 Dutch uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So I'm very I'm very I'm very happy to be here, and this is uh, an extraordinary opportunity to. To, to know some, uh, uh, some lovely Dutch people. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a very old friend in this country and in this city. Uh, he's a professor of the university called uh, Arie van der Walde. Uh, he's a translator from the Spanish and we know for many, many years. And uh, well, uh, I'm happy to be in his country. I see. Is he the translator of your book, I suppose? Uh, one of them and uh, and then some some other uh, Argentine uh, writers. Mm -hmm. He he was the translator. It's an excellent one, and he he made a, a wonderful work. Was uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, writers. It's uh, called uh, Juan Filloy. I see. Uh, and about the world and about the violence that is uh, happening and increasing every day more and more, do you think the television has something to do with it? 
Well, I think uh, the answer is yes, uh, of course. Uh, How? TV has to do. Uh, well, because the, the, t the television is uh, very indiscreet and can, can entry in, in, our, in our houses. And, uh, of course, uh, that's uh, not, it's not my idea. It's a, it's a very popular and universal idea. What can we do with this? Well, uh, in my house, we have no TV. There are no, no, no one, uh, no, there are no TV. As, uh, that's uh, six years ago, uh, at home we, we decided not to see television. There are no TV uh, at home. No. Oh, well, so that is... One can, one can defend, uh, one can uh, uh, make a, a resistance. And we are resisting. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but uh, is TV is not the the, the only the only uh, reason for the violence uh, in the world. Okay. And to end, I would like to ask you: What do you think about the globalization of the information through the internet? What could you tell me about? Uh, well, uh, we we have to talk about two different things. Internet is a is a, is a, is a very interesting uh, technology, and I, I use you use and we have to. Uh, the globalization is uh, is um, no is uh, is the, the the great lie uh, of the of the of the modern of the modern uh, world. Uh, I cannot believe. I cannot trust. Uh, I hate globalization. Uh, when when you live in in the periphery, when you live in a in an undeveloped country, when you live uh, uh, when you can see the poverty and the misery and the the real result of globalization, you have to hate them. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Giardinelli, for being here. Rodrigo Rey Rosa, your books has been translated into French, English, Italian, German, even Greek. And uh, your last translated book into Dutch is Na de Freire. What could you tell me about it, please? What is it over? Uh, the, 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 this last book? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a story that takes place just as uh, the peace treaties in Guatemala were being signed, and uh, it's about um, a soldier that doesn't want to be a soldier anymore, and uh, uh, a girl that w worked with the uh, rebel forces that also wants to get out of it. And, um, and so, an unfortunate end. Uh, but anyhow, what I see is that your books are influenced by the situation in Central America. We cannot escape from reality, but what do you try to give or what do you try to say through the books? I don't think I try to say anything. I just try to follow um, a protagonist and... Uh, see what happens to him if I let him lose in that mm -hmm. milieu. I see. And about yourself, are you married? No, I'm not married. About the, the, the situation in the world, do you think that the television is uh, a reason why so much violent, violence is starting to happen all over? Do you blame television also? I don't think television is responsible for it. Maybe in some particular cases, but I think violence was invented long before TV. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about the globalization of the information through the internet? Do you think it's something positive, or do you think it's 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 a lie, or what do you think about, please? Well, I must say that I don't watch TV. Um, I I don't have a, I have never owned a TV. Uh, I don't really give too much thought to that. I think it basically could be a good thing, but it also has to have its bad sides. Mm -hmm. 
I think it tends to make everything a little superficial. If you put it through the screen of a tube, uh, mm -hmm. where the different layers of reality are presented in just one plane, I think that may be impoverishing. I see. Well, apparently, no writer see ever television. Uh, do you have any reason why you don't have a television at home? I get bored watching TV. I like movies, but I don't... Mm -hmm. uh, What's the dip? It depresses you. Well, I can understand, yes. And what could you uh, tell to the people in your country if you have to give them a message, let's say? I don't think I have a message. I don't think I would tell them anything. Mm -hmm. And, well, about your staying in Holland, then how do you like Amsterdam? Do you like uh, Amsterdam? I, can't, I haven't seen enough of it, but I like what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about uh, drugs? Because here, for instance, a uh, soft drug like marijuana, if it is not legal, it is not persecuted. Do you like that? Oh, I think it's a very civilized measure. I wish the world would follow. Mm -hmm. uh, well, me too. And about uh, your country, how is the political situation there? What could you tell me? Is it something that you feel it in the air? Very much so. Uh, elections are coming next November, and uh, it's full of that now. It's, uh, Who do you think is going to win, left or right? There's no left left. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right or right? Right or right? Right or wrong? <laughs> well, more right. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm afraid the extreme right will. Apparently, uh, according to the, how do you call the? Uh, I don't know the name in English, but you know the the pro, uh, las encuestas. Yeah. How do you say that? The, the, the polls mm -hmm. say that the party that which is the extreme right leaning to the, towards the military is f the most popular by far. I see. And do you think is that going to wo change for worse? Absolutely. I would think it would be a change for the worst. Mm -hmm. Step back, so to speak. I see. So the new millennium is going to have a more right party in I power. Not, but it's, it's very likely. I hope not, but it's very likely that it be so. In Spanish, then. Okay. And about um, your future, do you have any book in mind? I mean, are you preparing a new book? There's a short novel that is coming out in Spain next November. Mm -hmm. La Oria Africana. Uh, how is it called in Spanish? La Oria Africana. La Oria Africana. Uh, shall we go on in Spanish talking? I think it can be interesting. Estudiaste con los jesuitas. Y bueno, ¿cuándo fue la primera vez que sentiste la necesidad de escribir? Al terminar la escuela me vine a Europa, estuve viajando casi un año. Y en, ese, en ese momento, viajando en tren por Europa. Uh -huh. So you've been traveling all around Europe and in that time you feel that you need to... En ese momento empecé a escribir... Uh, ¿Y de supongo porque me sentía muy solo notas de notas no, no ideas y impresiones pero fue la primera vez que tuve la necesidad supongo que para comunicarme conmigo mismo porque no, um, uh -huh. ahora con respecto a la situación o a ti mismo volvamos a ti tú eh, crees me parece que ya te pregunté eh, ¿Crees en ti? ¿Crees en Dios? ¿Eres agnóstico? Apenas. <coughs> no creo que somos una ficción. No, no. ¿Pero qué quiere decir creer en uno mismo? Bueno, no. lo, di lo digo porque hay gente que dice, no creo en Dios. Acá es muy común de escuchar a gente, no creo en Dios, creo en mí mismo, dicen. ¿En, en qué crees tú? ¿En la evolución de la especie? Supongo que hemos evolucionado, pero no, no veo a dónde vamos. Creo que estamos en un callejón sin salida. Uh -huh. okay.
Can you say it, please? Menken, Cassander, and Wichmann. Well, thank you very much for your time, and I wish you a good uh, evening and success. Thank you. Thank you.